A hydrofoil is a lifting surface, or foil, which operates in water. They are similar in appearance and purpose to aerofoils used by aeroplanes. Boats using hydrofoil technology are also simply termed hydrofoils. As speed is gained, hydrofoils lift the boat's hull out of the water, decreasing drag and thus allowing greater speeds. Description The hydrofoil usually consists of a wing-like structure mounted on struts below the hull, or across the keels of a catamaran in a variety of boats. As a hydrofoil-equipped watercraft increases in speed, the hydrofoil elements below the hull develop enough lift to raise the hull out of the water in order to greatly reduce hull drag. This gives a further corresponding increase in speed and efficiency of operation in terms of fuel consumption. A wider adoption of the technical innovations of hydrofoils is prevented by the increased complexity of building and maintaining them. Hydrofoils are generally prohibitively more expensive than conventional watercraft. However, the design is simple enough that there are many human-powered hydrofoil designs. Amateur experimentation and development of the concept is popular. Hydrodynamic mechanics Since air and water are governed by similar fluid equations, albeit with vastly different levels of viscosity, density, and compressibility, the hydrofoil and airfoil create lift in identical ways. The foil is shaped to move smoothly through the water causing the flow to be deflected downward which according to Newton's third law of motion, exerts an upward force on the foil. This turning of the water causes higher pressure on the bottom and reduced pressure on the top of the foil. This pressure difference is accompanied by a velocity difference, via Bernoulli's principle. So the resulting flow field about the foil has a higher average velocity on one side than the other. When used as a lifting element on a hydrofoil boat, this upward force lifts the body of the vessel, decreasing drag and increasing speed. The lifting force eventually balances with the weight of the craft, reaching a point where the hydrofoil no longer lifts out of the water but remains in equilibrium. Since wave resistance and other impeding forces such as various types of drag on the hull are eliminated as the hull is lifted clear, turbulence and drag act increasingly on the much smaller surface area of the hydrofoil and decreasingly on the hull, creating a marked increase in speed. Foil configurations Early hydrofoils used V-shaped foils. Hydrofoils of this type are known as surface piercing, since portions of the V-shape hydrofoils will rise above the water surface when foil-borne. Some modern hydrofoils use inverted T-shaped foils which are fully submerged. Fully submerged hydrofoils are less subject to the effects of wave action, and are therefore more stable at sea and are more comfortable for the crew and passengers. This type of configuration, however, is not self-stabilizing. The angle of attack on the hydrofoils needs to be adjusted continuously in accordance to the changing conditions. A control process that is performed by sensors, a computer and active surfaces. History Prototypes Italian inventor Enrico Forlanini began working on hydrofoils in 1898 and used a ladder foils system. Forlanini obtained patents in Britain and the United States for his ideas and designs. Between 1899 and 1901, British boat designer John Thornycroft worked on a series of models with a stepped hull and single bow foil. In 1909 his company built the full-scale 22-foot longboat, Miranda III. Driven by a 60-horsepower engine, it rode on a bow foil and flat stern. The subsequent Miranda IV was credited with a speed of 35 knots. A March 1906 Scientific American article by American hydrofoil pioneer William E. Meacham explained the basic principle of hydrofoils. Alexander Graham Bell considered the invention of the hydroplane a very significant achievement, and after reading the article began to sketch concepts of what is now called a hydrofoil boat. With his chief engineer Casey Baldwin, Bell began hydrofoil experiments in the summer of 1908. Baldwin studied the work of the Italian inventor Enrico Forlanini and began testing models based on his designs. 
which led them to the development of hydrofoil watercraft. During Bell's World Tour of 1910-1911, Bell and Baldwin met with Forlanini in Italy, where they rode in his hydrofoil boat over Lake Maggiore. Baldwin described it as being as smooth as flying. On returning to Bell's large laboratory at his Ben Brea estate near Badek, Nova Scotia, they experimented with a number of designs. Culminating in Bell's HD4, using Renault engines, a top speed of 87 km per hour was achieved, accelerating rapidly, taking waves without difficulty, steering well and showing good stability. Bell's report to the United States Navy permitted him to obtain two 260 kW engines. On 9 September 1919 the HD-4 set a world marine speed record of 114 km per hour, a record which stood for two decades. A full-scale replica of the HD-4 is viewable at the Alexander Graham Bell National Historic Site Museum in Badek, Nova Scotia. In the early 1950s an English couple built the White Hawk, a jet-powered hydrofoil watercraft in an attempt to beat the absolute water speed record. However, in tests, White Hawk could barely top the record-breaking speed of the 1919 HD4. The designers had faced an engineering phenomenon that limits the top speed of even modern hydrofoils. Cavitation disturbs the lift created by the foils as they move through the water at speed above 60 knots, bending the lifting foil. First passenger boats German engineer Hans von Schertel worked on hydrofoils prior to and during World War II in Germany. After the war Schertel's team was captured by the Russians. As Germany was not authorized to build fast boats, Schertel himself went to Switzerland, where he established the Supramar Company. In 1952, Supramar launched the first commercial hydrofoil, PT-10, Freccia de Ro, in Lake Maggiore, between Switzerland and Italy. The PT-10 is of surface-piercing type, it can carry 32 passengers and travel at 35 knots. In 1968, Hassan Najadi, the Bahraini-born banker, acquired the Supramar and expanded its operations into Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, the UK, Norway and the US. General Dynamics of the United States became its licensee, and the Pentagon awarded its first R&D naval research project in the field of supercavitation. Hitachi Shipbuilding of Osaka, Japan, was another licensee of Supramar, as well as many leading ship owners and shipyards in the OECD countries. From 1952 to 1971, Supramar designed many models of hydrofoils. PT-20, PT-50, PT-75, PT-100 and PT-150. All are of surface-piercing type, except the PT-150 combining a surface-piercing foil forward with a fully submerged foil in the aft location. Over 200 of Supramar's design were built, most of them by Rodriguez in Italy. During the same period the Soviet Union experimented extensively with hydrofoils, constructing hydrofoil river boats and ferries with streamlined designs during the Cold War period and into the 1980s. Such vessels include the Rakita type, followed by the larger Meteor type and the smaller Voskhod type. One of the most successful Soviet designer inventor in this area was Rostislav Alexeyev, who some consider the father of the modern hydrofoil due to his 1950s era high speed hydrofoil designs. Later, circa 1970s, Alexeyev combined his hydrofoil experience with the surface effect principle to create the Ekrano plan. In 1961, Sri International issued a study on the economic feasibility of passenger hydrofoil craft in U.S. domestic and foreign commerce. Commercial use of hydrofoils in the U.S. first appeared in 1961 when two commuter vessels were commissioned by Harry Gale Nye, J.R.'s North American hydrofoils to service the route from Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey to the financial district of Lower Manhattan. Military usage in Canada during World War II 
Baldwin worked on an experimental smoke-laying hydrofoil that was later superseded by other smoke-laying technology in an experimental target towing hydrofoil. The forward two foil assemblies of what is believed to be the latter hydrofoil were salvaged in the mid-1960s from a derelict hulk in Baddock, Nova Scotia by Colin McGregor Stevens. These were donated to the Maritime Museum in Halifax, Nova Scotia. The Canadian Armed Forces built and tested a number of hydrofoils, which culminated in the high-speed anti-submarine hydrofoil HMCS Bras d'Or in the late 1960s. However, the program was cancelled in the early 1970s due to a shift away from anti-submarine warfare by the Canadian military. The Bras d'Or was a surface-piercing type that performed well during her trials, reaching a maximum speed of 63 knots. The USSR introduced several hydrofoil-based fast attack craft into their navy, principally the Saranka-class missile boat, a unique vessel built in the 1970s. The Toria-class torpedo boat, which was introduced in 1972 and still remains in service today. The Matkar-class missile boat, which was introduced in the 1980s and still remains in service today. The Muravi-class patrol boat, which was introduced in the 1980s and still remains in service today. The U.S. Navy began experiments with hydrofoils in the mid-1950s by funding a sailing vessel that used hydrofoils to reach speeds in the 30 miles per hour range. The XCH-4, designed by William P. Kyle, exceeded speeds of 65 miles per hour and was mistaken for a seaplane due to its shape. The U.S. Navy implemented a small number of combat hydrofoils, such as the Pegasus class, from 1977 through 1993. These hydrofoils were fast and well-armed, and were capable of sinking all but the largest surface vessels. The Italian Navy has used six hydrofoils of the Spaviero class since the late 1970s. These were armed with a 76mm gun and two missiles, and were capable of speeds up to 50 knots. Three similar boats were built for the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, sailing in sports. The French experimental sail-powered hydrofoil Hydroptera is the result of a research project that involves advanced engineering skills in technologies. In September 2009, the Hydroptera set new sailcraft world speed records in the 500 meters category, with a speed of 51.36 knots and in the 1 nautical mile category with a speed of 50.17 knots. Another trimmer and sailboat is the Windrider Rave. The Rave is a commercially available 17-foot, two-person, hydrofoil trimmer in, capable of reaching speeds of 40 knots. The boat was designed by Jim Brown. The Moth Dinghy has evolved into some radical foil configurations. Hobie sailboats produced a production foiling trimmer in, the Hobie Trifoiler, the fastest production sailboat. Trifoilers have clocked speeds upward to 30 knots. A new kayak design, called Flyak, has hydrofoils that lift the kayak enough to significantly reduce drag, allowing speeds of up to 27 km per hour. Some surfers have developed surfboards with hydrofoils called foil boards, specifically aimed at surfing big waves further out to sea. Modern Passenger Boats Soviet-built Voskhods are one of the most successful passenger hydrofoil designs. Manufactured in Russia and Ukraine, they are in service in more than 20 countries. The most recent model, Voskhod 2 MFFF, also known as Eurofoil, was built in Feodosia for the Dutch public transport operator Connexin. The Boeing 929 is widely used in Asia for passenger services between the many islands of Japan between Hong Kong and Macau and on the Korean Peninsula. Current operation Current operators of hydrofoils include turbojet service, which speeds passengers across the Pearl River Delta between Hong Kong and Macau in less than an hour, with an average speed of 45 knots.
mainly using Boeing's jet foil. Also services Shenzhen, Guangzhou and Kowloon, operated by Shentak China Travel Ship Management Limited. Voskhod and Pearl's e-service between Tultair and Selina on the Danube, Meteor and Pearl's e-service in Poland between Szczecin and Winnicza, Cometer service between Nyniangusk and Irkutsk on the Lake Baikal, Cometer service between Vladivostok and Slavyanka, Pearl's e-service between Mazira and Turov on the Pripyat River, Meteor service between St. Petersburg, Russia and the Peterhof Palace, a summer palace of Russian Tsars. Meteor service between St. Petersburg, Russia and the Kronstadt, a strongly fortified Russian seaport town located on Kotlin Island, near the head of the Gulf of Finland. It lies 30 kilometers west of St. Petersburg, since 2012 replaced by a catamaran, Mercury. Meteor, Rakata and Voskhod hydrofoil types operate all over Volga, Don and Kama rivers in Russia, also the Lena River and Amur River. Meteor hydrofoils are operated by a number of tour operators in Croatia, mostly for packaged tours, but there are also some scheduled services to islands in Adriatic. Hydrofoils are regularly operated on the three major Italian lakes by branches of Ministry of Transportation. Navigazione Lago Maggiore services routes on the Lake Maggiore between Lucano and Arona. Navigazione Lago di Como services routes on the Lake Como and Navigazione Lago di Garda services routes on the Lake Garda. Three units of the Rodriguez RHS-150 type operate on each lake, for a total of nine hydrofoils. Navigazione Lago di Como still operates the last Rodriguez RHS-70 in active service in Italy. Former Russian hydrofoils are used in southern Italy for connection with islands of Lazio and Campania. SNAV has five RHS-200, RHS-160 and RHS-150 used in the connections between Naples and the islands of Capri and Ischia. Regular hydrofoil service from Istanbul to Yalaba. Hellenic seaways operate their flying dolphin service over many routes in the Aegean, between the Cycladic Islands, Saronic Gulf Islands such as Aegina and Poros and Athens. Meteor, Polzy and Voskhod hydrofoil types operate in Hungary. MAHART Pasnave Limited operates scheduled hydrofoil liners between Budapest, Bratislava and Vienna, inland liners between Budapest and the Danube Bend, and theme cruises to Komorom, Solt, Kaloxa and Mohacs. Voskot Flying Dolphin services are currently operated by Joy Cruises between Corfu and Paxos. They run from Corfu Port to Gaios using two hydrofoils. Ilida and Ilida II. Russian hydrofoils of the Kometa type operated on the Bulgarian Black Sea coast connecting Varna, Nizbar, Burgas, Suzopol, Primorsko, and Zarivo, and Rakata and Meteor models served the Bulgarian Danube ports between Rus and Vadin. Both services were discontinued in the 1990s. In 2011 the service reopened between Varna, Nizbar, Burgas and Sizopol by Bulgarian Hydrofoils Limited. Vietnamese Green Line Company operates hourly shuttle service between Ho Chi Minh City, Vung Tau and Kondao Island. Hydrofoil lines using the Russian-built meteor type also connect Haiphong, Ha Long and Mong Kai in North Vietnam. Fan Theat and Phu Quai Island and between Rach Gia and Phu Quoc Island in the south. The service between Pusan, South Korea and Fukuoka, Japan is operated by two companies. Japanese Junior Kyushu Jet Ferry operates Beetle five times a day. Korean Mirajet operates Kobe three to four times a day. All of their fleets are Boeing 929. As of February 2008, all of the commercial lines in Japan use Boeing 929. The routes include, Sado Kizan operates the route between Sado and Niigata. Tokai Kizan operates Seven Island, running between Tokyo and Izu Islands, via Teichiyama or Yokosuka. 
The destinations include Izuoshima, Toshima, Nijima, Shikanejima, and Kozushima. The same ship also licks Itami and Izuoshima. Kyushu Yusen operates the route between Fukuoka, Iki, and the two ports of Tsushima. Kyushu shows and operates the route between Nagasaki and the two of Gotu Islands, namely Fukujima and Nakadorijima. Kagoshima Shosen and Cosmo Line operates the various routes between Kagoshima and Tanagashima or Yakushima. In 2012, Agriculture, Fisheries and Conservation Department in Hong Kong leased a 12-meter HAWC hydrofoil-assisted watercraft, a catamaran to patrol the Geo Park, a UNESCO-sanctioned marine park in the Sai Kung areas of Hong Kong. Discontinued operations until 31 December 2013. Fast flying ferries operated by Connexon provided a regular public transport service over the North Sea Canal between Amsterdam Central Station and Welsons out in the Netherlands, using Voskhod 2M hydrofoils. It was stopped due to a new speed limit. Between 1981 and 1990, Transmediterranea used to operate a service of hydrofoils connecting Ceuta and Algeciras in the Strait of Gibraltar. The crossing took half an hour, in comparison to the hour and a half of conventional ferries. Due to the common extreme winds and storms that take place in winter in the Strait of Gibraltar, the service was substituted in 1990 by catamarans which were also able to carry cars. At the peak of the year, in summer, there was a service every half an hour in each direction. This high-speed connection had a big impact on the development of Suta, facilitating one-day business trips to mainland Spain. Between 1964 and 1991 the Sydney Hydrofoils operated on Sydney Harbour between Circular Quay and Manly. During 70s and 80s there were frequent services between Belgrade and Tekia in their DAP Gorge. The distance 0F 220 km was covered in 3 hours 30 minutes downstream and 4 hours upstream. See also the history of Condor ferries which operated six hydrofoil ferries over a 29-year period between the Channel Islands, south coast of England and St. Marlow.